want to live in sin. You want to be strong. The sacramentals help. Holy water has been used throughout the history of the church in order to bless things, to sanctify them, and for protection. Now, I, I just, I'm going to bless the stuff later, but I'm not going to wait. I've got to do this for this particular talk because we're going to run we're going to run out of time. I'm going to read to you from the old Roman ritual, the rite for providing holy water. And just listen to this. And remember what I told you about that principle, that the material, the water, the salt, whatever it is, that material receives that blessing. It attaches to it. And then wherever you sprinkle the water, the salt, whatever, that prayer is placed. And now listen to the blessing. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God's creature salt, I cast out the demon from you, and I'm going to make the signs of the cross that were called for in the ritual. I cast out the demon from you by the living God, by the true God, by the holy God, by God who ordered you to be thrown into the water spring by Eliseus to heal it of its barrenness. May you be a purified salt a means of health for those who believe, a medicine for body and soul for all who make use of you. May all evil fancies of the foul fiend as malice and cunning be driven afar from the place where you are sprinkled. And let every unclean spirit be repulsed by him who is coming to judge both the living and the dead and the world by fire. Almighty and everlasting God, we humbly appeal to your mercy and goodness to graciously bless this creature's salt, which you have given for mankind's use. May all who use it find in it a remedy for body and soul, and may everything that it touches or sprinkles be freed from uncleanness and any influence of the evil spirit through Christ our Lord. And then there's an exorcism of the water, and then the salt and the water are mixed together. But the language of the blessing, listen to it. It's an exorcism. Now, where that water or salt is placed, what happens? That prayer is placed. That exorcism prayer, prayer is placed. Can the devil still come in? Yeah. Can there still be all kinds of evil influences? Yeah, but it's going to cost them. It's going to cost them big time. And you might as well make them pay. You know? And, and I'll tell you, it lessens the power of evil. There are factors which can increase or lessen the power of evil in a place or in a person. I'll give you an example. A person, let's say, this is very common. They begin in school, let's say uh, junior high school. You know, the natural course of things you know, girls start to notice boys, and boys start to notice girls. And with the culture we have, promiscuity is facilitated. It's glorified in the movies, the movie stars, the rock stars. And so sexual promiscuity becomes normative. In eighth grade, oh, you better believe it. If you think otherwise, you are very, 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 very wrong. Today in our country, more than 50% of teenagers have had sex before they reach the age of 18. That's a fact. That's just a fact. They admit it. I'm not blaming them, but I am blaming the culture. It facilitates evil. So let's say, hey, I just, the, the, the young man, the young girl, she's, we just do, we're not doing anything bad. We're just doing what all of our friends do. And they don't have a profound influence of the church, most of them in their lives, so they're not protected at all. So they begin to sin. And then one thing leads to the other. Maybe at a party, of course they become acquainted with alcohol pretty early, then maybe someone introduces marijuana, and then if they're in certain areas, and it doesn't mean you have to be in a big city. I've been in small towns where you can get methamphetamine or cocaine on any street corner. And so maybe at a party, some enterprising young man has little packets of cocaine or speed, and, you know, people start trying it. And what does it do? It has an effect, especially those speedy drugs. It has an effect, and even uh, marijuana, it'll have an effect of, 
quote, loosening you up like alcohol. You will do things that you wouldn't normally do. And so they started with sex. Now they're doing really perverse things. By the time they're 21, it's right out of a porno movie. And then maybe they're starting to get involved with the occult. I can tell you that there are a great many of witches' covens and satanic, quote, churches who use drugs and sex to lure in unsuspecting prospective members into the church of Satan or into witchcraft. I can tell you that Hollywood, Los Angeles, San Francisco, permeated with it, saturated with it. The high priest and founder of the Church of Satan in the United States, Anton LaVey, had a big house in San Francisco. Thousands of people get drawn into this. They don't really know what they're getting into until it's too late. This is real. Now, I can just hear the voices. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the video cameras here and all the, the CD things and the audio, everything. That, you know, I'm being recorded for posterity. I want to tell you, I got a lot of guts. I think about it, and I say, man, this is going to go out there, and these guys are going to take one look at this. They're going to be infuriated. And I don't mean just angered. I mean infuriated with all the malice of the devil who will use them. You know, I've been threatened for years. Oh, we're going to take away your faculties. We're going to do that. Make my day. I'll go on as long as the Lord lets me go on. When he says, that's it, your hour has come, I'll spend a lot more time fishing. You know? What happened after the Lord left? You know, the, the Lord uh, died, put him in the tomb, Peter went fishing. <laughs> then the Lord appeared to them, remember? Appeared to them in the boat, you know? So he, you know, even if we, you get shut down, probably the Lord will resuscitate you. And you're not going to get out of it that easy. People are always telling me that, oh, no, you're not getting out of it that easy. You'll be around for a while. Probably will. In any event, these sacramentals are efficacious because they carry with them the prayer of the church. They don't convey sanctifying grace like a sacrament per se. However, they convey the prayers of the church. They convey the blessings of the church. They operate, unlike the sacraments, which operate in virtue of their own power, they operate in virtue of the disposition of the one receiving or using the sacramental. In other words, if you are a person of great faith and piety, your use of holy water is going to be more powerful than someone else who doesn't really believe it. You see, the efficaciousness of it is somewhat dependent upon the person using it. But the prayer is there. You sprinkle the holy water, it's there. The blessing is there. Uh, I've gone to many so-called haunted houses. People have all kind of goofy notions. Oh, there are uh, ghosts in my house. Now, there's no such thing as a ghost, but there's such a thing as a demon. There's such a thing as the devil. And many of these preternatural occurrences that happen, you see it in the movie, many of it's nonsense. It's, a lot of it's nonsense. Figment of somebody's wild imagination. But some of it is very true. It is not all nonsense. Can the enemy influence objects? Can they have an effect on objects, things, places? Yes, absolutely yes. Why would the Roman ritual have an exorcism for a place if the enemy can't influence a place? Oh, yes, it's very real. But do not, I repeat, do not be frightened by the enemy. Do not go. A lot of people are, are they become, what's the right word, intimidated. They, they, they go overboard. Let's put a crucifix in every window and in every doorway and do this and do that. And that. The most profound experience I ever had concerning the enemy was a real, malicious, violent, physical, and spiritual attack that happened to me. I had no holy water. I had no rosary. I had no blessed crucifix, devil grabbed me. 
and from the center of my soul, the Holy Spirit rose up like a lion. Imagine that you had a lion living in the center of your being. Like, a, you know, we have watchdogs. I have a watchdog. My, my dog says he's a pretty good watchdog. He's about 100 pounds worth. And, and uh, he's a real good watchdog. Imagine if you had a lion. <clears throat> that lion lived inside of you. And he was your spiritual watch lion. You know, the, one of the names for Jesus is Lion of the tribe of Judah. That lion, the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Jesus, rose up from within me, grabbed Satan, and rolled him up like a little ball and fired him into hell. And the power, the awesome power of God and the insignificant audacity of the devil were revealed for what they really are. You are a child of God. And so long as you live in his grace, you don't have anything to be afraid of. It is unbecoming for a child of God to be afraid of the enemy. Don't worry about it. Now, many, many people, I have known many people who came from the same place I did. They were drug addicted. They were alcoholics. They were addicted to pornography, sex, all kind of perverse things. Many homosexuals have tried to get out. And there are perverse demonic spirits which attach to all of these things. And they do not let go easily. You need help. You can't do it yourself. You need the sacraments. You need the sacramentals. You need to repent. Holy water helps loosen the grip. Blessed salt will help loosen the grip of the enemy. I, I have a good friend who is a very simple laywoman. And God has moved her to run a shelter and a kind of a rehab place for drug addicts. Now, she's not permitted to promote religion directly uh, because she gets funds, you know, to, from the government for this. So she, she, can, she can do social work. Uh, she can do rehab work, um, you know, of a, of a psychological nature. She has a staff psychologist, so on. <clears throat> In the kitchen, they make the food, her volunteers. Big pot of soup. Guess what one of the ingredients is. <laughs> oh, let's see. We have uh, three teaspoons of blessed salt, and we have a gallon of holy water, and we have some carrots. She's got green scapulars buried in the cushions of all the chairs at the dinner table. <laughs> got scapulars in all their pillows. What happens? Well, what happens is these prayers are placed. Can you imagine a person who's obsessed or even possessed by the devil and they're, and they're taking in holy water, blessed salt? That prayer is being taken into their very body. Now, I'm not saying that has a, an immediate and total effect of wiping out the enemy, but neither does napalm. But I'll guarantee you it has some effect. You know, you want to burn out the devil, use the weapons that we have been given. That is the sacramentals. They help us. They are weapons. We use them. Use them. It is the devil himself that has tried to do away with all of these efficacious signs of God working in our midst. So you keep your blessed medals and your scapulars, your blessed rosaries, your statues, your crucifixes. You have holy water. You use it and use it with faith. We are not superstitious people, but we are people who believe in the mystical power of the things that God has given us. And anyone who wants to contest this, I have here the Catechism of the Catholic Church, a sure norm for teaching the faith. And you've got to have a pretty wild imagination to get around that. And it speaks about the sacramental as our weapons, powerful weapons.